Hello, I'm Angel, and today I'm going to attempt to make three forms of tallow candles. These candles are a slight step up from last week's rush light. In last week's rush light video, I showed you how I rendered the tallow I'll use in today's projects, so I won't be doing that again. First up, the old fashioned tallow taper. My sources say the wick of these tallow candles didn't burn well, thereby requiring trimming as the candle burned. But none have told me what the material was. I've eliminated cotton and felt, so I think linen might be the winner. After last week's fiasco with the rush, <laughs> I'm definitely going to do a burn test. I'm afraid this is not right. There would be nothing for me to trim. But I can't think of another material a modest household would easily have on hand. What do you think it was? Leave your comment down below and maybe I'll make a tallow candle with your recommended material. Today I'm just going to go with the linen. A candle mold would have been an expensive single use item in a home, so I imagine people would have improvised with whatever they had around the house or homestead if they didn't want to make dipped candles. So I'm going to improvise too. I'll use this pill bottle. My linen wick. I'll set this aside for a few hours to harden. Now I'm going to make the more advanced tallow candle. I'm going to use a recipe from the 1872 Encyclopedia of Practical Recipes and Processes. To make the wick, I'm going to use some cotton thread soaked in turpentine. On a side note, when the United States was still a colony, turpentine was one of the many commodities exported to England. After soaking for an hour, I'm going to place the wick in the sun to dry. The rocks are just there to keep it from blowing away. As I mentioned last week, my tallow is very soft, so I'm going to use another recommendation from the encyclopedia. I'm going to mix in some alum. Alum is commonly used in pickling and canning. Although not popular today, people with kitchen gardens would have done a fair amount of pickling and canning in the summer and fall to prepare for winter. Candle making took place in the cooler fall months, and I think people would have felt fine using a little of their leftover alum to make a harder candle for the following year's warmer months. Again, I'm going to use my pill bottle as a mold. I'm going to let my candles cure for a few days. Nothing has told me to do this, but you know, rush light. Now to make the more modern tallow candle. I bought these wicks at a craft store and I'm gonna use this leftover jam jar. A few hours later, this is what I have. And this is what my old fashioned candles look like after being left out at room temperature. I read this frequently happened in the warmer months. It's July now here in Ohio, but I thought with the air conditioning on, it wouldn't be a big problem for me. Even the alum candle has slouched. The way I see it, my options are to melt the tallow again and remake the candles or burn what I've got. So let's do this. Tallow candle with linen wick is up first. It is twice as bright as the rush light. I'm surprised by how loud the crackling sound is and it smells only slightly like bacon. Tallow candles with 1870s hacks. This is so badly slouched that it's almost like having a flashlight. It doesn't really seem to be that much brighter than the linen wick. I burned both on plates and they have made a bit of a mess. Last up is my modern tallow candle. A bit brighter than both the other candles, that's probably because of the clear jar, and it doesn't make the crackling sound that the other two did. 
It is also cleaner because the melting fat is contained within the jar. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That tells the YouTube algorithm to push it out to people watching similar content. Join me next week when I'll be looking at and testing beeswax and spermaceti candles. I'll see you then.